Good afternoon, everybody. You are about to see a group video presentation on deer, brought to you by Daniel Schmile, Peyton Rich, Colby Stewart, and Case Whittle. I hope you enjoy. This is a photo of a baby deer. It comes from the family Cervidae, and there are a total of 38 subspecies of deer around the world. Of those 38 subspecies, there are 17 found in the United States. In this photo, I wanted to discuss the different types of foods that deer will eat in ag settings, as well as the economic value of their damage. Deer like to eat leafy greens like the photo you're seeing now, as well as nuts, berries, and even mushrooms. It is estimated that every year, deer cause over $100 million in damage to agricultural settings around the United States. This photo is a perfect example of why deer choose the habitat they do. Tall grass and thick brush is a perfect place for a deer to lie down and rest up for the night or to hide from predators. This is a black tailed deer. You can tell because it has a lack of a white rump and a dominant black tail. Typical length is six to seven feet. The height is between three and four feet at the shoulder and the weight is anywhere between 100 and 250 pounds. This is a mule deer. You can tell by the dark gray brown with a small white rump. It's got unique ears, a length of four to six and a half feet, a height of three to three and a half feet at the shoulder, and a weight between 125 to 330 pounds. Now you see here, deer are even toed ungulates. And as you can tell by the tracks, they come through and their toes are right next to each other. When they get excited and they're going fast, the toes will split out, so you're getting more traction. And when ungulates and the deer are going to be hopping over fences, they're going to be standing in one place, stilting. And they're going to leap over that fence like it's nothing. Now, I may have some pretty sweet moves when I jump, but I think this deer does it just a little bit better. As mentioned before, deer have even-toed feet. They also tend to step in the same spot, which can make the indent deeper and help you track them. Now the toes do go wide when running or when the deer are frightened. When they're stodding or jumping from a fixed position, the feet will widen out as well. And when they're running upwards of 45 miles per hour, you will also see the feet widen. In this photo of a buck from yearling to post mature, you'll see that the antlers are high and branch forward. New growth happens immediately after the old antlers are shaken off, though it does take time, about 150 days till fully grown back. At this point in time, it's best for the bucks to stay in an open range to avoid antler damage via contact. There's also velvet that grows on antlers until they harden, typically in around August. This is the time when the deer will rub against trees and such to shake off the velvet to let them shiny new antlers shine on through. When deer live in the desert, their migration is dependent on rainfall. When winter rolls around, the deer like to go to a lower elevation. And when summer goes, comes through, the deer will travel back up to the higher elevation as seen via this herd migrating across the river up into the mountains. It's also known that deer like arid, open areas and enjoy rocky hillsides, but that just means they're pretty much wannabe goats. Deer are herbivores. They mainly eat grass, woody plants, fruits and veggies, but they also eat snakes as Dr. Hedrick showed us that nasty ass photo. Deer are crepuscular, meaning they feed in early morning and in the late evenings. They also have no canine teeth only molars. They do have a multi-chamber stomach. The first two are acting as storage, and later, when they're chewing cud, the food is then digested. Sometimes they eat together as depicted in this photo. When food is less abundant or there is something particularly tasty, like this bowl of corn, the deer will form a hierarchy with the most powerful eating first and the little punk asses getting scared away. Deer are polygamous, where larger males who have larger antlers are going to have more variety for sex. The mating season, 
or the rut is typically from fall to winter. No young bucks are allowed in the rut till about three to four years. They're just simply too small. The gestation period for the mother is about 210 days or seven months. Doe sequesters by herself. She's basically going to drop Bambi in a secure spot where Bambi is going to hang out until it's strong enough to walk. Fawns are born with these white dots to help them blend into their surroundings. They are still too weak for about 10 days to walk as they don't have the muscle mass. They are born with about five and a half pounds at birth, which is less than half of my fat ass when I was born. The moms have high quality milk, which the fawns will ingest in regular intervals of about 10 minutes. And due to the high quality milk, they will mature quickly. When mother deer or does ingest a lot of acorn mass, it increases the chance of twins the following season. Mothers typically have a birth rate of one to two born per year. All right guys, so one of our best management practices is actually gonna be fencing. We want that fencing to be at least seven feet tall. As you can see here, we have it um, protecting our new um, nut crop orchards. Um, and one thing I wanna, I wanna show all you guys, is clearly we have footprints all around these areas. So we wanna make sure that we um, keep that fencing and constantly manage it because if there's deer here, they're gonna wanna get in there. Like I just mentioned, guys, you got to make sure you're maintaining your fences because clearly it looks like a tractor or someone drove into this fence and created this big old hole, which is plenty of space for a deer to hop right on through. And as you can see, you got some tracks leading right up to it. Just on the other side, more tracks. So they're getting in there. This fence is clearly not effective. And one more thing right over here, if the deer wanted to easily hop over, you know, this fence is supposed to be at least seven feet tall to keep the deer out. And I'm not quite seven feet, but this is still quite a bit shorter than me. So you can see the foot tracks around the other side. Fencing is primarily an agricultural control. It is important to minimize damage to our crops. That's why closing fences such as this is very important. In our more rural settings, such as these, you can see deer and cattle interacting. This has factors relating to competition, as well as hoof and mouth disease. Both relate to unhealthy cattle costing money to ranchers. This leads us to our urban interface, which in sites like this where nature and the urban sector interact, it is important to control deer. Controls for deer in the urban interface include drones, paintballs, as well as just noise-making devices that will scare off deer. Anything that will spook them will help them to avoid incidences like this where they're ending up in stores and places they don't belong. This photo of a deer's hoof print is a clear sign that deer are around. If you see this around your home or especially in an agricultural setting, know that the deer have found something that they enjoy and will continue to come until a management practice is implicated. Both this photo and the next are great examples of where deer like to den up. The pushed over grass is a clear sign that deer have been coming here at night to lay down and sleep. This photo is a great example as well because you can see the twigs are pushed over in a concave formation so the deer can really get in there, go to sleep at night, and not be worried about any type of predators. This photo and the next are very clear examples of inadequate management practices. As you can see, there's a big gap in the fence, very easy for deer to just hop on through and get into an ag field. Now this photo, you can see how the fence posts are six to seven feet high, but the gate in between the two fence posts is only about four feet. Very, very easy for a deer to just hop on through if it can see food on the other side. Here's a great video on female deer behavior. The deer on the right that was just spooked away from the food was sitting there for a few minutes until this bigger female came over and tried to push it away. Obviously this worked, and now the deer in the middle has all the food at once. This little fawn on the left has come up basically just to talk to the females and test them out itself. I don't think it wants to fight, but it does want food. Now you can see the bigger female pushes it away because it wants the smallest amount of competition possible in order to get that food. In this next clip, you see the fawn and the smaller doe taking off to possibly go find more food. The behavior of the fawn can tell me that both of these deer are related. 
you can also see just how happy this doe is to have all the food to herself, as well as how close she'll let me get to her just because she knows that there's food there. As you're about to see, fawns can be very playful and energetic animals, sometimes even running around in zigzag patterns, simply trying to get other deers to engage. Looking at this photo, you can obviously tell that there is a deer to the left of the oak tree. But if you look at the color of the fur on the deer and the color of the trunk of the tree, as well as the foliage, you can start to conceptualize just how good these animals can be in camouflaging themselves so predators do not see them. This here is a great video showing what can and will happen during the rut season. During this time, males become very aggressive with each other. And if they see a male next to a female during this time, they will make sure to go test that male and try to get it to run away so that it can have the female all to itself. Now after the rut, all bucks have a major drop in testosterone. That causes weakness in the connection tissue and the antlers begin to fall off. During the months of January through March, you can often see bucks with zero antlers or like in this photo, just one waiting for the other to fall off. Now, although it's very easy for us to see the deer in the camera's view, think about if you were a mountain lion or another predator 100 or maybe even 200 yards away scanning this hillside in search for a buck. You would not be able to see it. Now, although it's hard to tell, this buck is in search of a mate. He's trying to sniff a pheromone that females produce during the rut to let the bucks know that it's time to make a baby. Now in the previous video, you got to see two bucks fighting each other for territory or to get to a mate. This is during the rut or the mating season. But if they're not in the rut or mating season, they tend to hang around each other a lot. This is for foraging and for safety purposes. Now although the video quality is poor, I wanted to show the class a couple of things. First off, notice how comfortable the deer is being able to lay down in the brush, scratch his back, and not pay very much attention to his surroundings. This is due to a couple things. First off, you are not allowed to shoot or hunt the bucks that are in surrounding neighborhoods of Lake Nacimento, California. Another reason why they're so close to homes is because homeowners enjoy feeding them in the morning and at night to keep them around for shots like this. The last thing I wanted to point out is the sheer size of this buck. When he turns towards the camera, you can see the size of his antlers and how tall and wide they are. This is almost double the size that you usually will see. Another thing I wanted to point out is that deer enjoy feeding on the foliage of homeowners' plants. This is about a 50-50 on whether or not people enjoy having them around or want them to go away. For the final part of this presentation, I thought it would be very important to include a hunting section as well as the economic importance of it. I would advise the class if you do not like seeing dead animals, dead animal parts, and animals skinned, please just close your eyes and listen. Things are about to get a bit graphic. I thought I would start here with this photo to try and explain just one of the reasons why hunters do what they do. Trophy hunting is a huge part of the hunting economy and most hunters enjoy hanging their trophies on the wall to exploit the physical appearance of these amazing animals. Something that I thought was very, very cool in this photo is that even though the six deer hanging on the wall are very, very similar in appearance, there are three different subspecies in the picture. The top left is a white-tailed deer. The bottom left and bottom right are both black-tailed deer. The two middle and top right hanging bucks are mule deer, and you can see the difference in the racks. I'd also like to point out the difference in the sheer size of the bucks as well as the shoulder size of the mule deer compared to the black tail and white tail. Now on a guided hunt, you may see a vehicle like this. Ranch owners will have vehicles with very high up seating so you can drive around the ranch looking for the animals that you would like to hunt. Another reason why they have these types of vehicles is so they can monitor the bucks that they have on the property to make sure that they aren't gone when someone comes to hunt. Another reason why these trucks are very handy to have around on a ranch that allows guided hunts is because if you're two miles out and you shoot a 250 pound deer, it's going to be very, very hard to get that back to camp. 
using a vehicle like this with a cable attached at the back allows you to be able to drive miles and miles without having to carry all that weight. I want to take this time to let the class know that the pictures are going to get a bit more graphic, so if you're not liking what you see, please look away. Now even though most hunters really enjoy taking their trophies, getting to hang them on the wall, and show all their family members during the holidays, the real reason why we choose to hunt deer is so we have food to put on the table. Now after the animal is tied up by its hind legs, all hide is removed from the outside of the body. After that, the organs are removed and then the buck is docked at the neck. All remaining meat will be used as food for months and months to come. Now although we can use all that meat for months and even years to come, it needs to be a good shot. As you can see in the photo, the red dot just behind the shoulder is a perfect shot. It enters through the back of the shoulder and hits the heart directly. If you hit something like the hind leg or even in the belly, the buck can run for miles and miles, and with all that adrenaline dump, the meat is likely to spoil. Hunting as a whole adds over $40 billion a year to the U.S. economy, and over half of that value is done just by hunting trophy bucks. Now you may be asking yourselves, how does one put a dollar amount on a buck? This is done by taking the total antler length and adding it together. Every piece of bone above the head is calculated and added to a complete total. That total is then converted into a dollar amount. These amounts can range anywhere from $500 to $25,000. Now a white-tailed trophy buck usually ranges from about 150 total antler length to 250 total antler length. The buck you see in this photo came out to a total inch count of 227.5 inches. This buck is worth somewhere around thirteen dollars to $15,000. Taking that dollar amount and looking at how many guided hunts go on in the United States yearly, you can start to just see how economically important these trophy bucks can be to the U.S. economy. And let's not forget about the hundreds of jobs that it gives to American people to have and to make a living off of. Now I wanted to include this picture because even though we may think that deers have very good camouflage, Compared to other deers, they're almost invisible. See, human vision can see red, orange, and bright yellow colors, while deer vision, not so much. This is why you'll see a lot of hunters on public land using orange so other hunters can see them, but the deer cannot. Now, I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed our presentation today, and if not, I hope you guys at least learned just a little bit about deer. I thank you all and have a wonderful day.